to actually I think you're right, Jen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if that's helpful, I'm not sure. I think you're correct. Yes, just when in doubt, just say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is this is the acquia podcast where i have the privilege of speaking with a lot of people about drupal about open source technology community and business today i'm going to be having a conversation with paul wander from invica invica is the parent company of sensio labs uk and between Sensio Labs and Invica, they have a couple of really interesting things going on. For one, Invica has a growing Drupal business and Drupal practice. And Sensio Labs UK, of course, is the UK division of Sensio Labs, the um, parent organization that looks after the interests of the Symphony 2 platform, uh, many components of which are being integrated into Drupal 8. Paul, you're the co-founder of Invica, right? That's right, correct. So how did you discover open source software? Do you have a, do you have a first memory associated with that? I do, actually. Um, it was in the annals of open source. I thought it wasn't so far back. It was actually in about 2000 and early 2000s, I guess. I came across uh, Sugar CRM uh, as a potential candidate for uh, my previous organization was working uh, and looking uh, for a new CRM. And that came across and that was just like, whoa, that's interesting. Um, and then by about 2005, 2006, I'd got together with the guys from Zend who uh, it's a slightly longer story, of course, with Rasmus, et cetera, but effectively have uh, brought the PHP language to where it is today. Um, I always like to stay at the forefront, not bleeding edge, but leading edge when it comes to new tech uh, and m actually enterprise level as well. That's mostly where my interest and my background lies. So my earliest memories of that are uh, getting together, I guess, with the Zen guys, understanding what their backstory was, how the PHP language itself uh, arose and what's critical for me is that PHP seems to be uh, the only language which is actually designed to be uh, executed on the web so it's perfect for gluing it plays well with lots of other technology it executes um, in it executes on the web servers themselves um, and it seemed to be the first I'm not sure it was the first but it is the preeminent language for executing web um, full stop so and we see that today with numbers that are astonishing and uh, it, there's various different measures but by any anyone will tell you that at least 70 percent of the internet is running PHP um, and from my purposes I've seen the rise of PHP uh, in the enterprise I started this business uh, around 2006, 2007, uh, de delivering professional services around PHP, helping large enterprises turn what they maybe didn't even know they had in their IT estate and professionalizing it, add a propping, uh, adding proper methodologies, processes, um, and standards around uh, development of something new, which is this pure web play language. Could you compare for a second PHP itself when you first discovered it to it being a language today that is uh, used for mission critical enterprise applications that uh, reach an incredible audience? Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's two sides of the coin uh, when it comes to PHP, uh, which is that it's really easy to learn. And that's a really good thing and a really dangerous thing. Um, and what happened, I believe, in the earlier days were that hobbyists were hacking it around, getting PHP to do things really cool and interesting. 
um, but maybe not, let's say, enterprise ready. Um, and the maturity is not just the language itself. There's a lot of associated technology through the LAMP stack itself and then browser technology as well through to the modern PH, uh, uh, JavaScript uh, frameworks. So that all the, the, eco the ecosystem around PHP uh, is quite broad, but at the heart of it, you've got this incredible language which now, with, this, with, the, with, with the advent of popular and modern frameworks, um, security is a non-issue today. If you code bad uh, applications, um, you code bad applications, and you can do that in any language of your choice. Um, but all the old issues, all the, uh, all the itties, reliability, security, availability, etc., all of those um, are uh, acceptable, uh, yeah, accepted and acceptable around PHP. Um, and as long as, again, if you, you know how to use PHP in the right way, then it's a mature enterprise standard language. I don't see PHP, frankly, being used to deliver uh, um, giant ERP type applications, particularly. There are a few. Uh, and in fact, if you're interested, you can go to OpenERP and have a look at that, which is an ERP system being delivered and built on um, open source languages. And there are plenty of others. But what I see is that for the, the parts of the business that need to be agile with a small A, that's where they favor PHP. The marketing team who can never get campaigns, landing pages, social engagement, omni-channel, they want to do things quite quickly quite cheaply, see if it works. If it works, they'll do more. It allows organizations, startups and enterprises alike, frankly, to dip their toe in the water of web technology. So, so how did Invika get started? Um, and well, Invika got started actually as I was going around, I was representing uh, in the early days Zen uh, in the UK, Zen Technologies. And every time I went to a client and to talk about uh, the IDE, uh, the server products, frameworks, etc. Um, we started to see that teams there were needing help, more help than just tooling. So they wanted help and education around training, consulting, leadership, um, development team practices, coding standards, uh, how to engage with the business. So we saw a need, and my background is enterprise delivery of professional services, so IT projects. And uh, I realized quite quickly that there was an opportunity in the UK uh, to deliver serious projects using PHP. And we decided that time with my partner to start this company up um, and see if we could build a professional services business. We started the business in the UK in conjunction with iBuildings, uh, which are our friends in the Netherlands who continue today. Uh, in the last two, three years, we had uh, we separated from iBuildings, who continue to do great things in the Netherlands. Invika is now in the UK, delivering quality PHP to large enterprises. Could you talk about the adoption of open source software in the enterprise, and perhaps specifically about Symphony? Yeah, so we uh, Sensio Labs UK was established, um, I guess, a little over a year ago. Um, in conjunction with the guys from uh, Sensio uh, in France. Uh, the Symfony framework uh, is extremely popular. Uh, the top two frameworks are Zend and Symfony. And Symfony 2 has been adopted by, let's say, the leading open source projects uh, in the world. Uh, and obviously, Drupal is the key example there. Uh, since we established Sensio Labs because we saw a growing demand for Symfony expertise in medium and large businesses in the UK. And that was lovely to see that. We, we had seen that in France and uh, uh, continental Europe, Symphony is extremely popular. And we frankly hadn't realized how popular it was uh, in the UK. So we're delighted that we're able to service that market now with leadership, training, consulting, etc., uh, and best practices and standards and all the good practices of how to develop quality applications based on PHP and using uh, Symfony. What's the business case in the enterprise for open source software for Drupal for Symfony? So why do enterprises actually uh, want to adopt uh, open source technology and 
packages, uh, etc. And at the outset, uh, I think there's no getting away from this. They imagine it's going to be cheaper, which it is a little bit to license software, but that's not the point. Enterprises now, and, and the, I'll call it the social revolution that's happened. Everyone knows what I mean with all the, the Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Snapchats, and everything that's going on, especially around omni-channel and, and in businesses. Enterprises realize now that the old ways don't work. So where you used to have licensed technology, so that, that was, a, 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 licensed technology is a, a model of a market that works. You pay a company, a lot of people pay a company a small amount of money, and they'll have a whole floor of developers producing an application for you, maybe a word processing application or similar. What's happened is the flip, the inverse is now happening of that, where you have a lot of people involved in building those applications themselves uh, for personal reasons, uh, to add to their CV, for example, or for whatever reason, people are contributing towards these open source projects, a lot of people are, and the communities then around these projects, are, it's like the uh, uh, onion skin layers. So at the center you have the core committers, people who can actually update uh, the main trunk of the software. But around that you've got all sorts of different layers of people who are contributing maybe to particular modules, people who are producing documentation, etc. And because the software is uh, let, as free and easy to use, uh, and when I say free, I mean free of encumbrances when it comes to licenses. There's, uh, usually they're not commercially restricted. So you, um, it means that a very wide community adopts that, that software. It means that to an enterprise, they've got a piece of software which is better tested in the dark corners of that software, they will have more people using that weird feature than you would ever have in a piece of, in a piece of licensed software. And if we talk about a CMS, a content management system, that's really vital. You get complex work, workflows and editorial sign-off process which have to be uh, followed. And if you're customizing Drupal, you, can, you just know that you've got thousands of cohorts out there who have done or are doing the same thing as you so your certainty or level of, uh, your level of confidence actually in the software is very high because you've got a massive community which is testing and hitting that software all the time. Licensed software vendors don't like that so much. When it comes to enterprises uh, looking at open source software, they are particularly interested to have a throat to strangle. Uh, they want to be able to go after an organization uh, to help support their software. And the community is a bit amorphous, doesn't really provide that level of support. So it's very important that around the key open source projects, we've got organizations out there who do offer that packaged uh, support, the service level agreements attached to it, et cetera, for the large enterprises. So clearly when it comes to Drupal, Acquia is the, the company that's providing that support. Um, and that's everything from the hosting stack right through to uh, I guess critical application support uh, 24 by 7 uh, to systems that are running. So it's, it's really important that enterprises see that um, maturity out there in the, in the commercial marketplace in order for them to start adopting these projects into their environment. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Thanks, Jan. All the best. Jam? For roughly okay. Okay, I hear you now. But uh, tell me, but tell me, I'm looking at my camera. Is that is that acceptable? <laughs> you can edit that out. <laughs>